Hey true crime besties, welcome back to an all new episode of Serialistly. Hey everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Serialistly. With me, Annie, your true crime bestie, here to break down another crazy case for you today. Now, guys, really quick, actually, before we jump right in, can you just take a quick, quick moment, make sure you're following the podcast, give it a little, like, five-star rating and review, do your thing, and then we're going to get into this because this case is probably one of the most not only horrific but like bizarre cases that I've heard about in a while. So I knew that I needed to jump on here. I needed to break it down for you guys. I needed to talk with my true crime besties about it because holy shit. And just when you kind of have an idea of, oh, I know where this case is going. I've heard as much as I need to hear. Uh Uh-uh. Newsflash, you haven't because there is just so much craziness along the way and so much footage and kind of, I don't want to say behind the scenes, but you know, like you get like a different lens of the case from this footage to where you're like, what the fuck was even that reaction? What are they talking about? Anyways, it's crazy. So the case we're talking about today is almost completely unbelievable. And yet at the same time, it's unbelievably common. It's tragic, upsetting, and very, very confusing. Imagine this. Imagine being a cheerleader in your senior year of high school and then suddenly finding yourself in the center of viral police body cam that is plastered all over the internet and the news. That's exactly what happened to Alexi Treviso. And in her story, there are two versions, the truth and a huge fat lie. According to police, Alexi had been keeping a secret for a long time, nine months to be exact. They believed that she knew that she was pregnant and she did something awful with her baby once it was born. However, some aspects of this case aren't just about one girl's personal ordeal. You'd think that now in 2023, women would realize that they have so many options when it comes to unplanned pregnancies. Even if they truly do find out that they are pregnant at the same time that the child is being delivered. Stories like this shine a light on how societal expectations, family pressure, fear, shame, judgment, ignorance, and immaturity can lead to tragic and deadly consequences. Or maybe it's not that at all, and some people are just straight up evil. In Alexi's case, it led to being charged with murder. So did Alexi even know that she was pregnant? Or did she purposefully keep it a secret from everyone so that she could get rid of the baby later? Was the baby born alive? Or did something happen after the baby was born? In this episode, we're going to try to sift through all of the lies and hopefully get to some semblance of the truth. This is another ongoing case, so just remember, everything here is alleged and backed up by court documents, and anything else is strictly my opinion. So, get ready, guys, and let's get into it. The Artesia teen delivered him in secret in the hospital bathroom and left him there. Like, how big is the baby? It's full term. What? Nine months? You're getting a much clearer picture of the confusion, shock, and ultimately horror. It was a glory, bloody massacre mess. I've dealt with death before, but never like this. Right. Let's see. Have you watched the news of the, the girls that what they do to their babies and what they go to jail? Alexi Treviso has brown hair and brown eyes and wears glasses. She is from Artesia, New Mexico, which only has around 12,000 people. Not much is known from her childhood other than her parents divorced and she has one sister. It's believed her and her sister live with her mom and her stepdad. Alexi was in her senior year of high school, where she was on the varsity cheer squad, had tons of friends, and had a boyfriend for almost three years. Alexi and her mom, Rosa, were very close. 
Even though Alexi was 19 during her senior year of high school, it seemed that she and her mother had very much of a, I don't care how old you are, even if you're still in high school, you're a child type of dynamic between the two of them, which is fair to an extent, I guess. On the night of January 26th, 2023, Alexi came home from cheer practice and she went to bed relatively early, but she woke up shortly after from extreme pain that she was having in her lower back. She woke up her mom before 11.30, told her what was going on, and they decided that she should go and see a doctor that night. They went to the Artesia General Hospital emergency room and told the doctor on duty what was going on. With the lower back pain, the doctor was concerned that she may have a urinary tract infection or something more serious could be happening with her kidneys. The doctor then asked if she was pregnant, and Alexi adamantly said no and that she was still a virgin. Rosa, her mom, was also in the room and also told the doctor that there is no way that she is absolutely not pregnant. However, the doctor wanted to do a pregnancy test anyway to rule it out. Before the pregnancy results came back, Alexi was given some pain medication. This is the ER doctor and charge nurse's recollection of that evening. She, um... She presented, I want to say it was around 1130 at night. I don't have the chart in front of me, so I, I, there's some details I'm going to have to sort of guesstimate from my, from my recollection. Uh, her physician complaint was for back pain. She was brought in by her mother. We were told that she began having um, back pain after coming home from cheerleading practice. Sounds like she had gone to bed and then woken up and woken her mother up. And so her mother brought her in. And when I initially evaluated her, she really wouldn't sit still. She wouldn't really let me examine her. She had on, on a very baggy sweatshirt. And, um, you know, a 19 year old with back pain, the vast majority of the time, that's not going to be anything serious. But she was just not really acting right. And so I became concerned that there was something else going on, technically a kidney stone or something like that. I asked the patient and her mother if she could be pregnant. Her mother said, no, under no circumstances. Um, I've been buying pads for her every month. Um, and so our, I ordered our normal evaluation, which would be some basic labs, including a pregnancy test, as well as a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis to make sure she didn't have a kidney stone or something like that. The price test came back positive um, an hour late, maybe 45 minutes later. I can't, I can't tell you exactly how much time had elapsed when I became aware that her test was positive. So at that point, we sent it for a blood confirmatory test, which is what we call a quantitative HCG, which tells us um, it gives us a number instead of just a positive or negative for price test, it gives us a number. And the reason why that number was really significant was because um, one of the concerns that you would always have in a young woman who is having back or abdominal pain could be a tubal pregnancy. There were some issues because they had run a pregnancy test on her and they found out that she was pregnant. And she was adamant, the mother was in the room with her and was adamant in his diet. To Did you see that? Or did it was, no, was Chris, came, Chris came to me and told me this was what was going on because we were having an issue. Okay. And he was worried about the mother, the, the dynamics between the mother and the daughter because um, the daughter was completely denying she was pregnant and the mother was relatively upset about that she was pregnant. After that, Alexi was in the room with her mom and other hospital staff. And it was about 1.39 a.m. when all of a sudden... Alexi had an intense urge to go to the bathroom. In the hospital surveillance video, you can see Alexi running to the bathroom holding her butt. Less than a minute later, her mother Rosa comes to check on her to make sure that everything is okay. Alexi didn't open the door, and Rosa seems to be talking to her through the door, and we don't really know what was said here, but she ended up walking back to the hospital room. Alexi was in the bathroom for about 10 minutes before her mom came back to check on her for a second time. But again, she doesn't open the door, and Rosa went back to the room. Yeah, the primary gave her some pain medication. She started feeling a little better, and then she said she needed to go have a bowel movement, and that's kind of when the whole thing happened. Yeah. So what did you do after that? So after, when she went to do the bowel movement, where were you at? Uh, Initially, I was at the nurse's station, um, and then at some point, I went and kind of checked on her, knocked on the door, seeing if okay. she needed anything. She denied. She said she didn't need anything. Did you hear anything? I 
I didn't hear anything. Flush the toilet flush. Yes. After a while, I started hearing. So I probably checked on her two to three times. I'm not exactly sure. And then I just kept hearing paper towel dispenser mm -hmm. and uh, flushing and like the water running. And I knocked in. Did she need anything? Denied anything. And then eventually it got to a point where I said, you need to come out. And mm -hmm. I, got, I asked the, uh, the clerk to get the key to unlock the door because obviously she locked the door to go to the restroom. And uh, whenever I finally, we finally had the key to unlock it, she opened it and just kind of walked out. And Did she say anything at that point? She didn't point? say anything. She was just looking kind of straight past me and went back to the room. Did you look into the restroom? I did. Okay. Yeah. What did you so see? Went into the restroom and I saw a large amount of blood. Where? And it was on the floor. It, it appeared to, like, had she had tried to wipe it up in places. Mm -hmm. It was kind of on the back wall behind the, the commode, the toilet. Um, and so I said, you know, you okay? What, what happened? And she said, I'm on my period. And she said, and she walked out. And then I went in, because uh, at this point we had already received the the positive pregnancy lab test. When was that? I, I, I couldn't tell you the exact time, but I know prior to that we got a positive pregnancy test on her. Okay, prior to the bowel movement, did you tell her that we got y'all got a positive? No, the doc hadn't been in there to tell her yet. Okay, so okay, yeah, so. Went in there, and I did look into the, the trash can at that time to see if there had been anything tossed, but the liner was fresh and completely empty. Now, there seems to be a little bit of a discrepancy between the hospital staff on whether or not she was told that she was pregnant or not before going to the bathroom, but it could be because these interviews were three months after the incident. The fact that she said that the bathroom was bloody because of her period is absolutely appalling, and the staff didn't believe her, thinking maybe she had a miscarriage. But what they discovered in the bathroom was absolutely horrifying. She had went to, she had buzzed to go to the bathroom, so one of the nurses was going in there anyways because she was going to set up for them to do like, you know, pap smear and everything. So she was like, I'll go ahead and disconnect her and she'd go to the bathroom. So I was like, all right. So she was in the bathroom and then Chris, which is one of our other nurses, he was like, because I was like, dang, she's flushing that toilet like an awful lot. Oh, so you noticed her toilet flushing? flushing? Toilet? Yes. And then he was like, well, damn. So I went and I knocked on the door and I said, are you okay? And she said, yes, I'm fine. I'm just having a hard time going to the bathroom is what she replied. So I was like, okay. And then as I will push the call light if you need anything. So you and told her to push the call light? If yeah, she okay. needed anything. And then, um, like, a few more flushes had gone by, and then that's when Chris was like, I don't know, because I told him, what if she's having a miscarriage in there and, you know, flushing stuff down the toilet? So he knocked on the door, and he's like, you got to unlock this door. And then she wouldn't reply, and he's like, if you don't reply, he goes, and then that's when she heard him call for me. And he was like, Laura, you got the spare key to this bathroom? And I was like, yeah. Cause we keep like a ring of keys um, by the desk where I sit. So I went and I got the key and just as we were getting ready to open the door, she opened it and all I saw was like blood everywhere, like on the walls, on the toilet. It just looked like a horror film. Now, it, was it covering the floor or was it like you splotches? Could, you could tell she was wiping it up with paper towels cause it was like smeared. smeared. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so anyways, the floor was just smeared with blood. Um, blood on the wall, like on the toilet and stuff. And Do you remember which wall? Oh, uh, it was like the back wall between the toilet and the sink. In your in your line of work, what would cause that kind of splatter? I think something that got pulled out or ripped. Like, like if you ripped something and blood just went, it was like, like once you see the, the photo, you'll mm -hmm. see what I'm talking about. It's just... So like you say, like rip, like something went like that. Yeah, like if you when you rip something, or if you cut something and you go, like you swing your hand and blood mm -hmm. just splatters. Okay, so that's how it looked. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We just kept hearing toilet, the paper towel dispenser going, and the toilet flushing. So yeah, when we opened up the door, like we saw all that, and then she, I noticed she had uh, bloody uh, footprints that she was leaving, going back to the room that we had put her in. So I had called housekeeping 
and which was Leela, and I was like, hey, Leela, I'm sorry to bother you. I said, but I think this patient just had a miscarriage in her bathroom, and she left, like, a mess. If you could come and clean it. And she said, okay. So she came down, and she started cleaning it, and then she went to pick up the waste basket, and then that she put the basket down, and she yelled for me, and she was like, Lori, come here. The waste basket's heavy. And I was like, what, what do you mean the waste basket's heavy? So when I picked it up, and I moved it towards the door, I was like, oh, shit, it is heavy. So I pulled it out because it had like a fresh liner inside. So we didn't think nothing of it because we looked. So we, when I pulled the liner out, there was like paper towels. And she had, we had rolled uh, trash bags already in there. Mm -hmm. But she had grabbed a few and like balled them up and put them on top of him. So when I removed them, that's when I noticed the baby on the bottom of the trash can just wrapped in the bag. Like she, she had it tight, like she, cause it, it was the, the top was twisted. Mm -hmm. And then, like, tucked under, like, so it wouldn't open up. So, basically, if you, like... Like, like when you grab trash and you, like, swing, swing it. it. And then you fold it over mm -hmm. to, like, put it down or whatever. Yeah, that's how it And went. it was clear. It was it a clear, was clear bag. bag. So, yeah, it's one of those clear bags. So, you saw... So it was a hospital liner? Mm -hmm. So, you saw the baby inside the bag? Yeah, and then when I picked it up, that's when I noticed it even more. Because all I saw was black and purple. But once we picked it up, like the bag suctioned to his face. And that's when I yelled for my charge nurse, which was HT. And I told him, um, hey, she put her baby in the trash can. So um, I handed the baby to him. And he took off to the trauma room and opened up the bag. And then that's when we went and got Dr. Vasquez. Now you say that the, the bag was suctioned to his, to his, his, face. his face. So mm -hmm. was that from... Did, was I think when I lifted it up it kind of loosened and so it just where he was still moist it just suctioned to him okay. all right besties i'm gonna be real with you and just keep it 100 for a second this podcast and social media creator world is still just so foreign to me and so brand new because I am not tech savvy and I often still have no idea what I'm doing, to be honest. But luckily, I've started getting better at like honing in on this new career path because of tips and tricks that I learned from the OG herself, Chris Jenner, over on Masterclass. You know the saying, nobody works harder than Chris Jenner. She's built more brands than I can even count and an unbelievable empire, regardless how you feel about the different brands she has crushed it. So why not seek her advice and guidance as I try and navigate this new territory? I obviously don't know her personally, so I was so excited to hear that she taught a lesson on Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. Annual memberships start at $10 a month and you get unlimited access to every instructor, thousands of online lessons, exclusive content, insights, and much more. There are over 180 classes to pick from in over a 11 different categories. Everything from personal branding with Kris Jenner to makeup courses with Bobby Brown herself. And new classes are added every single month with exciting instructors including Gordon Ramsay, Usher, Robin Roberts, Mariah Carey, and just so many more. Now the Kris Jenner class, for example, breaks down how to navigate personal branding, product concept, monetizing your brand, and more. And one of the main lessons that I took away from it was the importance of continuing to hustle, to never get complacent, and to always reinvent and think of new ways that you can serve your audience. So find practical takeaways that you can apply to your life and even at work. If you run a business, you can use Masterclass to help your team. Whether it's cooking, public speaking, you name it, Masterclass has got it. Gain new skills in as little as 10 minutes, either on your phone, computer, tablet, smart TV, and even on audio mode so you can listen to it on the go. Which for me, it's perfect to tune into a quick lesson when I'm in the school pickup line or when I'm getting a pedicure and just trying to choose chill and relax. Now, if you're wondering how much would it cost, Danny, to take a one-on-one -on -one class from the world's best? Well, with a Masterclass annual membership, it would only cost $10 a month. Get unlimited access to every class. And right now, as a Seriallessly listener, you can get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash AE. That's masterclass.com slash AE for 15% off an annual membership. Masterclass.com slash AE. The hospital staff immediately called the police after they found the baby. Once on the scene, the officers were in the room when the doctor told Alexi and Rosa what happened. And what you're about to hear is truly unbelievable. Um, so I started working her up. 
Um, we did a pregnancy test on her, showed positive. She was denying that she had sex. Um, then she said she had to go to the bathroom. She went to the bathroom. She was in there for quite a while. We kept knocking on the door. Finally, we got her to open the door, and there was blood and shit everywhere. She was cleaning it up. Okay. So we took her back to the room, and there was, I was afraid that she knew she was pregnant and she had done something to herself. Mm -hmm. um, so the doctor started doing a vaginal exam on her. We had the lady come to clean the bathroom. She put the baby in the trash can, and then she put another clean liner over the top of it. Okay. So they look when they looked in there, it looked there was no trash in there, but right. it was underneath the clean bag. The okay. baby's dead. Okay, we have him in trauma too, but she killed the kid. Yeah, how old was the how old was the baby? I don't know. It's full term. She just had it. She had it in the bathroom. Is what happened, and then she whatever she did, I don't know. She's gonna lie. She wouldn't even tell us she's pregnant. She's been lying the whole time. Okay. So that's what's going on. Um, I just pulled the doctor out of the room, so nothing's been said to the patient. Or the yeah. mother that's in there yet. Okay. Um, I have Leela, the housekeeper. If you want to interview her, yeah, I she's the one that kind yeah. of found. Under yeah, because I wanted to get with you guys first, and then get with her right. to get her statement before I even did anything. Well, this, I'm the charge, and this is what has happened. Okay. You can interview the nurse that had her. Okay. The two nurses that were taking care of her. You can talk to the tech, which is Lori. She's the one that went in there and actually found it because Leela's like this is really heavy. Okay. So then. Uh, Lori went in there, and then of course the baby was underneath the red, uh, clean liner. Okay, yeah, if the, we can if we can speak with Lori. That okay, I'll get Lori and I'll, and I'll, I'll get, get, so, I'll get uh, so officer, so he's the first thing though is I need to make sure that the the mother, the woman who delivered the baby, is medically stable. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if she delivered a placenta. She's bleeding a lot. I just got her accepted to Loveless. So how I need to tell her what's going on, and I need to tell the mother what's going. The mother, they're both in there together. Mm -hmm. Do would, is one of you willing to be be present for that conversation? Yeah. Um, but, um, are you guys going? Yeah. Okay, let's yeah, go in right sure. now. And I'm sorry. We discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I came out and I didn't know what to do. Lexi, I told you about this. But I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. It was not crying or making. What did you do to it? Okay, stop right here. I stop, stop. Number one priority, guys. Number one priority is she just had a baby. I don't know if she's delivered the placenta. She's bleeding significantly. Yeah. I've spoken to the obstetrician at Loveless. They want her up there as soon as possible. Okay. We need, I need your, I just need your permission to transfer her for medical. She needs she's to be 19. Oh, you're right. You, but she you, is a student, too. She's not still a teacher. You're well. right. You, you're right. She needs to. I'm sorry, I forgot. She's 19. Keep out of me. But you need to, for, to make sure that you're safe, I need to send you to Love, Loveless to labor delivery. Will you please agree to that? Yes. 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 I, okay, I great. I'm going to work on that. Um, in terms, I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, you do have to have the police involved. And that thing was crying. It came yeah. out with that thing. I know, I know. But the, the baby's going to have to be taken for autopsy and you know, be an investigator and everything. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But we need to do this correctly. Um, and I want to be transparent with you about what our steps are going to be. Do you guys have, I'm the charge nurse, do you guys have any questions for me? Like, how big is the baby? It's full term. What? Nothing. Nine months? Nothing was crying. Lexi, have you watched the news of the, the girls that what they do to their babies and what they go to jail? The was crying. Okay. Right. So as of right now, like, like what I said is we're going to have the detectives come over here and they're going to talk to you. OK, we have to gather some more information about what's going what's going on. They'll get your statement. They're going to get the doctor statements. They're going to get everybody's statements. OK. So I don't know everything yet, okay? So I'm not gonna tell you, I can't tell you nothing, honestly, okay? All Look, I can she's say is, not gonna go to jail. Right, right now, she, she well, no, well, right now she's being detained. So she, she's not gonna leave from here at all, period, okay? So one of us she's will be in- your custody? Like, yeah, she's detained. Yeah, she's not under arrest, but she okay. is detained, okay? She's not free to leave. So while this whole thing is coming up is you're not free to leave, okay? One of us okay. will be in here the whole time with you because you're not going to try to leave or nothing like that. 
All right. Mm -hmm. Like I'm saying, the detectives will be here. They're going to talk to you. They're, I mean, your care is of, of the utmost right now, okay? They're going to do what they need to do to take care of you to make sure you get stable. They get you transferred out or whatever. Like I said, the detectives are already been notified. They're already on the way. So they're going to come talk to you, all right? So don't leave. Don't try to do nothing. One of us is always going to be in here in this room with you, okay? Unless we have to step out for doctor's orders or something like that because if they need to examine you or do something with you. But other than that, like I said, you are detained. You are not free to leave at this point. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Where was the baby at? I, I don't know. I have no clue yet. Like I said, I just talked to the charge nurse. We're still getting all the information right now. Okay. So that was a lot. So let's break that down. Alexi apparently gave birth to a full-term baby while in the bathroom sometime between 1.39 a.m. and 1.57 a.m. She then tried to hide the baby and put it in the trash can. She comes back in bleeding everywhere and tries to blame her period. And the baby was found dead. Which, at what point do you think that they're not going to find a baby in the trash can and that you're going to pass it off as your period? And Alexi says, and this is what gets me, she says, nothing wasn't crying. It wasn't doing nothing. Using this distancing language, which is a super common thing that criminals subconsciously do. And then she tries to act just as surprised as her mom when she's told by the doctor that the baby was in fact a full term nine month old baby. What are you even talking about? How do you not notice that it is a full baby coming out of you? I've given birth twice, naturally. I mean, naturally in the sense that it was a vaginal delivery, not natural in the sense that I didn't get an epidural because you know my ass got an epidural. Shout out to all the women who don't. But there is no possible way that you don't understand that that is a full term baby coming out of you and not just a tampon. Like, I can't. So first of all, how the hell did nobody notice that she was pregnant for nine months? There has been a lot of discussion online as to whether or not her mom knew that she was pregnant as well as some photos from her cheerleading days and maybe even her senior pictures. In some of the pictures, you can clearly tell that her normal weight is healthy for her age and her height. She's a skinny, slender girl. And then all of a sudden, she gained a significant amount of weight only in her stomach, which you can tell in her cheer pictures and from a video even of her performing and not one person noticed this? Are you seriously telling me that nobody noticed that all of the weight in this 19-year-old girl that was gathering in her stomach didn't send off some alarm bells and some red flags? Even if you forget the pregnancy aspect for just a minute, was nobody concerned about why that was happening? Nobody from her school, nobody on the cheer team, cheerleading coaches, none of her friends, her own mother, her sister, her boyfriend, who clearly she was having sex with. Obviously, you don't get pregnant without having sex. So did he not notice? Like, how do you explain it? Make it make sense. And going into a little more about Rosa, her mother, she told the ER doctor that she was buying Alexi pads every single month. So what was all of that about? Was Alexi lying to her and saying that she was on her period when she wasn't? Also, pads, I get a lot of people don't like tampons, but is that something because she wanted to keep her daughter pure and not use a tampon? Now, before you say, Annie, that sounds crazy, people actually do believe that. But Alexi had a long-term boyfriend and all of a sudden gained a lot of weight only in her stomach. I understand that moms want to believe that their daughter is telling the truth, especially if they have a very close relationship. But I mean, come on here. I also know some parents can be in denial, but really? So did Rosa have a suspicion that Alexi was pregnant and maybe wanted her to tell the truth? Was she buying Alexi the pads every month almost in a way of like, okay, let's see how long you're going to keep this lie going type of way? Or again, is it possible that Alexi was actually lying about using them and maybe going through a box of them each month? I get the feeling that whenever Rosa took Alexi to the hospital, Rosa thought that it would be more of an aha moment, like, okay, I'm going to catch you lying, the jig is up now, I know you're pregnant type of thing, which obviously I have no proof of this at all, and this is purely my speculation, but I really don't know if I believe that Rosa had zero idea that she was pregnant. However, I don't think she thought Alexi was anywhere close to a full term or nine month pregnancy. In the body cam footage, the expression on her face 
is this look of just genuine shock when the doctor says full term nine months. Even Alexi's mouth dropped a little bit, which I don't know if I buy her being shocked, and I'll get into that more in a little bit. Alexi, on the other hand, clearly we know that she was lying about being a virgin and never having sex before. But did she know that she was pregnant? I'm assuming she never took a pregnancy test, and there are some women that truly have no idea that they are pregnant until they are delivering. It's uncommon, but it does happen. So was Alexi in denial that she was pregnant and thought that maybe it would just go away on its own? I don't know. There have been a few people online that claim that Alexi may have had a disability. I don't know any other details, and again, that might not be true. I want to be clear that if that is the case, it would maybe explain a little bit more of this. But if that's not true, how big of a complete moron do you have to be to give birth in a bathroom of a hospital and then throw the baby away in the trash and think that nobody is going to know what happened? Make it make sense. Um, When I did the pelvic exam, her cervix, the, the opening to the uterus was just wide open. And there was just blood pouring out. And I was... I was really mystified as to what could be happening because I thought, well, maybe she's having a miscarriage. So as this story goes on, we learn more about Alexi's condition after giving birth and the baby. And that possibility quickly goes out the window and makes you wonder what was really going on and if this was all planned. At the end of the last body cam footage, Rosa left the room. Then she came back to ask Alexi more questions. This audio is a little bit annoying because the officer is talking on the phone, but take a listen. Where did you put the baby at? Tell me the truth. Uh, 517 836 460. You put it in the bag? Yes. In what bag? Why did you say anything to us? Do you want to get in trouble for this now? You could get in trouble for this. Mom, Mom, all right, just give it time, okay? I'm going to speak to detectives whenever she's ready, okay? You ready for the second one? Second one is 512-401-333. Last three of that second one. This particular moment is telling just by what is not said. There was no, where is the baby now? How did the baby die? Was it a boy or a girl? Did anyone try to save the baby? There's nothing. The concern from both Alexi and Rosa is only focused on Alexi and whether or not she's going to be in trouble for this or if she's going to go to jail right now. This interaction and even in the one before where her mom Rosa says, I told you to tell me the truth. Did you see on the news what happened to girls who do this to their babies and they go to jail? It's just to me a little telling about their relationship. Was Alexi scared to tell her mom the truth out of fear that she would get in trouble? Did she think that she would be in more trouble than going to jail for her actions now? It's really confusing and it's very, very selfish. Also, Alexi is 19. She's not 14, 15, or even 16. And her mom was almost making excuses a little bit ago when the ER doctor was saying that they would need authorization to transfer Alexi to another hospital. And the charge nurse reminded the doctor that she's 19. And even then, Rosa said, well, she's a student. And the nurse again said, she's still 19. So what's really going on here? Her mom is acting like Alexi is 12, but she is an adult that consented to having sex, got pregnant, and then threw her baby in the trash. There's no minimizing what she did, even if she was scared. But it seems like that's exactly what her mom is trying to do. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you're watching on YouTube and let me know what you think. There was also footage of Alexi's mom, stepdad, Alexi's boyfriend, and his mom when they were all in the hospital in the lobby. Hi, Rosa? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Is this your family? Yes. Okay, hi, I'm Detective Gonzalez, our Chief Police Department. Uh, what questions do you have for me right now? Um, what's going to go on? Like, what can I be with her? Can She's getting life lighted out right now. Okay. So they're taking her right now. Okay. I haven't spoke to her at all. Okay, so, so like, what, like, what's going to go on? Like, what, are they, what's going to happen with her, like? So she's going to get treatment before we even talk to her because she needs to be stabilized. So Mm -hmm. that's why she didn't life let it out. Okay. 
Once she gets stabilized, we'll try and talk to her. Um, the baby's going to go up north for autopsy. Mm -hmm. More likely it'll be done within the next day. Um, is she going to get the tank after, like, she's released? How? Get what? Like, are y'all going to take her into custody or anything like that? Like, that depends what? on what the DA finds. We have to wait for the autopsy to come back to see what happened. Because okay. right now with how everything happened, we, we're going to do an investigation, get more information from the OMI, mm -hmm. Office of Medical Investigator up north. Mm -hmm. And with that, we present that to the DA, see what the DA wants to do with charges, if any at all. Okay. It should be pretty soon they make a decision. Because with the age of the decedent, they, they usually expedite autopsy reports and such. With normal people that pass naturally at home, it takes a couple months for us to get reports back. Stuff like this, we'll get it back pretty soon. Okay. So. We don't, we don't know. That's why he'll be going up north. So, even though she's of age, if she's not available to be contacted, can we put you down as next of kin for mm -hmm. all my? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you'd be grandmother. I am mom. So you'd I'm be the death. You'd be the descendant's grandmother. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So she. That's the her boyfriend. Uh, Mr. Boyfriend, I, do you have a driver's license? No. And is the address on you current, on the driver license? Because determining what the all my does, if she's not, if she's still in medical, then they do release the infant back. It'll have to be released somebody. It'll be up to all my who they determine next kin is. Maybe the parents, mm -hmm. but maybe you. Okay, so that's where we can get everyone's information. Mm -hmm. okay. Would y'all mind? Talk to me later when y'all are okay. Yeah, I, I was with her. I know she talked to him for a while on the phone, and then she came to me. So I've been with her the rest of the time. Today. Mm -hmm. oh, so what did she come here for? That she told you. She had. She told me she had back pain. That's it. That's it. Okay. Has she been having back pain before? Yeah, she's pain for her and her hips is is no. I mean. She was born with like her, I don't know, it was like crooked. Her spine? Okay, because my ex-husband, he hit me. He beat me whenever I was pregnant with her. Mm -hmm. So she was early. So um, she had some problems with her hips. Like I always had to take her to the chiropractor to get adjusted mm -hmm. because she couldn't use, like, she was always getting constipated. Like she had to get lined up, whatever. So, I mean, I've been taking her to chiropractor because I always thought, you know, well, this time, you know, I didn't know. I honestly didn't know she was pregnant. I didn't know. I just thought, like she said, I had back pain while my hips are hurting me. I think I need to go to the chiropractor. I said, okay, let's go tomorrow. But she was like in really a lot of pain and, you know. When did it start? Like the pain? Yes. Uh, today she's, or last, yesterday she said it was really bad that her hips were hurting and her back. And then last night, we were on the phone together, and she said her, her hips were hurting bad. And I said, ask her if anything else is hurting. And she said just everything. And she went to sleep. But she's a cheerleader, too, so she's big in cheers. They have a cheer competition. She's, she works out. I mean, And she's been so, active this whole yeah, time? Yeah, she's been active this whole time. And who does she live with? With me. She, so parents. She's, oh, that's, oh. Yeah, cause she's in school. She's a senior. So. And how long have you all been together? Uh, almost two years. Two years? Okay. So I'm um, not trying to be rude to you, but you are more than likely will, will be the father? Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no. We get it. We get Sometimes it. it happens. Gets a little shaky when it's newborn, stuff like that. But with like death certificates, stuff like that, interpreting his sons, if you choose to use them, will be the ones to help you get those. Um, other than that, because that's all really you'd need. 
and they can help you with the afterlife care, okay? Mm -hmm. um, do you all have any questions for me right now? No. Okay. Do you have my number? You can, that is my work phone if you want to text me okay. or call me. I have my email in there as well, okay? Um, Sergeant and I got your information right? Yes. Okay. Like I said, I don't know. There will be charges that will be up to the district attorney's office. If any, or even done, okay? Okay. It's too early in the game to know right now. Okay. So she's getting life lighted out. We'll talk to her later. Okay. You, that's if she even wants to talk to us, if she chooses to, because she still has her constitutional rights. Should I, like, get a lawyer for her? Should I? You can. Call? That's your choice. I can't tell you what to do. <laughs> That's something that y'all as a family must talk about, okay? Now, what do you make of that footage and that behavior? It seems very odd to me. Alexi was transferred to Lovelace Hospital in Roswell and was later discharged. She did not deliver the placenta there either, so it's assumed that she flushed it in the toilet at the first hospital where she delivered the baby. From there, she went home. And then she just totally went about with her business like nothing ever happened. She was back at school, back with her friends, back with her boyfriend. She even went to prom. Now, Artesia is a small town, and initially, after everything that happened, there were rumors at her high school of what had happened. Which, side note, not sure if something is a rumor or if it's true, but anyway, Rosa was pissed. She ranted to police officers that this was their fault, and also accused the hospital staff of violating HIPAA laws. Rosa talked to the police like they were trash and beneath her, almost as if she wasn't in the same hospital that the police were the night that they were called because her daughter threw her newborn baby in the trash and tried to hide it. Now, let me just say this. Newsflash, asshole. Your daughter could be charged with murder. You may want to cool it a little bit, maybe calm down a little bit. The encounter was extremely bizarre and off-putting to say the least but the police weren't anywhere near done with Alexi, not by a long shot. In April of 2023, the police started doing formal interviews with hospital staff about what they saw that night. And this is what the ultrasound tech Lorraine had to say about it. She said, Lorraine, do me a favor. And her hands were covering her face and I saw that she was distraught and I said, what can I do? What's wrong? And she said, I really do need for you to go in and do the ultrasound. And I said, okay, that's fine. And we're still looking at the same diagnosis. And she uh, mentioned to me, she said, you know, this is disturbing. She pulled me aside. Um, she was whispering to me and she said, um, apparently what the patient did was she walked in, um, she goes to the restroom and delivers the baby in the restroom and then uh, puts the baby in the bag, in a bag, because the, the garbage that we have throughout the departments are pretty tall and there's those large uh, garbage bags uh, that are pretty sturdy. So I guess she delivers it in the bathroom and um, pulls placenta and everything out, um, throws the baby in the bag, goes in the garbage. So anyway, so I go into the room with her, and I know that I need to, I need to scan her, but I need to scan her um, through the vagina, not through the belly, because I noticed that there was a significant amount of blood on the table. And there was a police officer in there, and I was a little bit uncomfortable with him being there, and so was she. So I asked him if he could step out and just stand by her, so he did that. So I didn't want to have a conversation with her after... I was given this information, but she was talking to me and um, while I'm trying to get things set up and she says, I don't know what's going on. She said, um, I didn't know I was pregnant. I'm a cheerleader. I started gaining a lot of weight. My clothes were tight. I was taking birth control pills. So she said, this didn't make any sense to me. I just and I did my scan, and then I left. Other than her saying, telling you that she was pregnant, taking birth control, and her clothes got tighter, did she tell you anything else that may come to mind? And did you use the the the, the 
belly ultrasound or the vaginal? Through the vagina. Through the, through mm -hmm. the vagina. Yeah, and still there was, you know, some tissue because when you deliver, you know, whether it's a normal delivery or not, sometimes it's still placenta tissue can still be in there. Mm -hmm. And so she was having um, significant amount of bleeding. But after that, I stopped. I told the doctor, and I sent the report out to be read, and that was it. So and it wasn't until the till the morning too when I walked in, and this is Artesia. I'm not from Artesia. I just work here during the week, and word gets around, and I just was hearing stories of what really happened. I never knew the details until I walked in the next day, okay. and I just didn't say anything. And how long have you been a, a, a Ultrasound. Ultrasound uh, for about 20 years. Okay. So, um, is there any other trauma or anything to that part of the body that would lead you to believe that she didn't give birth or? Um, no, no, because, you know, and after talking to the ER doctor, I mean, she was obviously in labor, you know, mm -hmm. and I think she knew that. Um, and so my assumption was, you know, she panics because when she was talking to me, she was, she was talking pretty rapid and she was like, I don't understand. I don't. So, you know, was it all mental, psychological, who knows, but she definitely knew what she was doing and what was doing was wrong because of the way she was talking to me, you know, just stating you know, I didn't realize it was pregnant, and you know, but I'm taking birth, you know, so, I mean, she was panicked, but, you know, she, I didn't see her being in a state of mind where she did not know what she was doing, and that's just my perception for, I mean, working with women, well, not just women, women, and men, and scanning in general, you know, who, who's a little bit off, and I, I didn't get that with her, she She's pretty much, uh, and she felt it. I mean, you could tell that she was, I don't know if I should say if she was worried or she was concerned because she knew what she did was in the wrong. That was just the impression I had. And she wasn't the only person who had that sentiment. The ER doctor and charge nurse also had chilling versions of their story when they spoke with detectives. Here is the ER doctor from that night. At that point, several of your officers arrived. They arrived very quickly. And we went in and I said, we found a dead baby in the trash. And she said, well, it came out of me and it wasn't moving, so I just put it in the trash. And the mother started screaming at her, screaming, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. This is after they had both sworn up and down that there was no chance she'd be pregnant. Um, and so at that point, once we got her transferred, and I believe that did the... Um, Officers called for, um, I, I'm not sure what steps they did, but we made sure we didn't touch the dead baby. We didn't do anything because we did not want to contaminate the crime scene. And that's then I documented and that's it. Um, and I, but I was told it was, it was in a plastic bag that was tied off and then stuck into a plastic bag. And then they put trash, she put trash in the top to try to hide it. Okay. So he was out. Yeah, that was what was told to me. But he was outside the bag when you you saw him. Yes, they had opened the bag up, and I just turned. I took the trash can. I just turned it upside down and dropped, dumped everything on the bed. Okay. And you didn't see any trauma or, or anything to the baby, or. I I um I have don't have a very good recollection of that. I I my brain was one hundred percent focused on. Is this uh, a patient I should try to resuscitate? And I, once I made the determination not to resuscitate, I, I all of my attention turned to um, making sure that the mother didn't die. Okay. So did any of the nursing staff find the placenta at the emergency room? No. No? Okay. We, I have no idea what happened with the placenta. I, ex she didn't deliver it at uh, Loveless either. She probably put it in the toilet would be my guess. And would that been would that have been something that was able to be flushed? It depends on how broken up it was. I mean, you know, if it's torn, you it potentially could have been flushable, or it's possible the housekeeper could have thrown it away without thinking it was just bloody. Um, you know, because there was blood everywhere in the bathroom. Really. 
And did she did she say anything other than after you told her that you found a, a deceased baby? Did she say anything? Just that it was it, it wasn't moving, so she put it in the trash. Okay. And mom screaming, I knew it, I knew it. Okay. It was a really unpleasant experience. I'm i I'm sorry for that. I really am. Is there anything um, you think we should know that we haven't asked? No, I mean, you have autopsy results and you can, you know, obviously make your decisions based on that. She was extremely duplicitous. She lied to us the entire time. It was very, I mean, it was an extraordinarily difficult case. Um, the nursing staff were distraught. The housekeeper was distraught. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I, I see, I, I, it's been a terrible case. Yes, ma'am. One of the, one of the worst I've seen in my career. The interview with the charge nurse was the one that was the most heartbreaking interview in this case, in my opinion. And it's a little longer, but I feel like everything that he said was extremely significant and very telling. Take a listen. Um, the next interaction I had was I had um, the tech, which was Lori Aragon, come and tell me, HT, you need to go to the bathroom. Um, so I went to the bathroom. There was quite a bit of blood in there. So um, this was after she came out. She went to the bathroom and was in there for a long time. And um, Chris was um, telling me, you know, she won't come out. So I told him, you need to get the key because the bathroom's locked. And so he told her he was going to get the key. And so she came out. But there was some blood in there. So I went to Dr. Vacas and told her, we need, we have, I was worried that she did something to herself physically in the bathroom. You know, the way she reacted being pregnant and the things that I was being told. How much blood was in the, in the bathroom? Um, it was smeared around, so it's hard to tell exactly how much. Um, but um, it was enough to cause me to have concern. Okay. Um, that um, she, had, I really thought she had done something physically to herself mm -hmm. when she found out she was pregnant. Question. When did she find out she was pregnant? Right as, it was pretty early on because we did the urine first off. Any any female that comes in with back pain, we do a urine right away because we're worried about a ur ur urinary tract infection. And with any female, when we do that, we always do a pregnancy test to make sure we don't give them medications that would contraindicate pregnancy. Do you know who told her she was pregnant? I believe Dr. Vasquez did. Okay. I believe. I don't know because I wasn't in the room for that because she wasn't, okay. I wasn't involved with direct care. Okay. But I knew she knew. Fairly soon because we already were having an issue with the mother being upset about her being pregnant. Prior to going to the bathroom? Way prior. Okay. Way prior. Because um, then they'd start an IV and then they started running blood work on her. Because once you find out someone's pregnant, then you run another lab test to see how far along they are. Okay. So they started an IV and we're giving her some fluids. I guess I don't know exactly what they were doing. I wasn't involved with that kind of care. Um, but I told Dr. Vasquez she definitely needs a vaginal exam. I'm concerned that she did something to herself. That was my concern. And they took they took her right into the room. And then I told Lori, call housekeeping. They got to come clean this up. Um, which time she called Leela, was, who was on call for housekeeping. Um, then I was just sitting there. And then um, the next thing, Lori comes and goes, HC, oh, my God, you better come to the bathroom. And I go in the bathroom, and she goes, something's in the trash can. I'm like, I looked in there. There's a clean liner. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, pick it up. I pick it up, I can feel the weight. I knew then we had a serious problem. I immediately took, I just grabbed the trash can and went right across the hall and there was trauma too. Um, I pulled, the liner was pulled out, but there was another trash bag in there in the bottom, but it was all kind of, it was rolled up. So I had to tear it apart. And then, of course, I saw the baby in there. So I pulled the baby out, got him on the bed, checked for signs of life. There was absolutely no life whatsoever. Um, I immediately came out of there after I did that, went into the room where she was performing, the, she was performing the vaginal exam and I immediately told her, you have to come out now. And she came out and we went into trauma too. And she reassessed the baby at that time between me and Chris and her, we determined, you know, there was no reason for us to begin any life saving. The baby was completely gone. Um, um, what was the, what did the bag look like? The bag was the original trash bag that was in there. It had trash in it. Um, she, when I pulled it out, it was spun. 
where it was tied, like tied, and then it was folded underneath the baby and in there. So it was like a little capsule the baby was in. So when I, you know, I had to tear that bag open to see the baby in the bottom. Um, if you would look in the trash, and I, I looked in there, um, I was when she told me, so something I looked, I said, what are you talking about? Because there was a clean line in the trash bag. So basically, he was in the bottom, trash on top of him. And then, and then another the clean, clean liner had been liner put on top. Put yeah, on top. yeah. Um, so then after that, after we determined we were not going to do any work on the baby, I shut the room down and I, I called. I said, call the police. And then I didn't let anybody. We didn't, no one went back in that room. I made sure of that right. till the police arrived. And you said, so with the blood in the restroom, you said it was like smeared. Can you describe where all it was smeared at? On the floor, there was some on the toilet, there was some on the wall. Do you know, do you remember which wall? Um, the, well, there's the one wall that's by the um, toilet. Mm -hmm. that's closest to it where there's a side row, there was some blood there. There was quite a bit of smearing on the toilet itself. And then on the floor, it was just, you know, smeared around. Okay. Do you, what do you think that is from? I thought she did something to herself physically. Okay. Because she found the way the interaction between her mother and her daughter and this was, is so, un, was weird. And so, but just to make sure, mother is uh, patient's mother. Yeah. And then patient. daughter is patient. Yeah. So the daughter is the patient mm -hmm. and the mother. The interaction between them after she found out she was pregnant, the way the daughter was reacting about, she was adamantly dying. She was even pregnant. She was denying that she had sex. And you heard her say Yes. That? She was denying that openly. Um, so what did mom say when she said that? Well, mom was upset, mm -hmm. and the mom was saying, "I can't believe you. You, you know, you know, you can talk to me. You're supposed to talk to me about this stuff before you were having sex. All those kind of things." She was saying stuff like that, which is pretty common. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an uncommon thing. I see yeah, young girls sense. having sex, and, right. and they come in and they're pregnant, and then the mother is with them and find out, and it's upsetting to them. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so it wasn't uncommon. It so, happens. Finding out your daughter's pregnant is not uncommon. Not the other incident. Not the. Trash. No, no, no. I've never seen anything like that. Okay, just so want to make sure. Like no, so just no. I've I've seen lots of young girls come mm -hmm. in and find out they're pregnant, mm -hmm. and then of course they deny that. They, it's not uncommon that they deny that. No, mom, I haven't even been having sex. You know what I mean? That's their. That's a lot of them's initial reaction. Right. Because, you know they. They feel like they're going to be in trouble, I guess. I don't know what they're feeling. Right. But that, that's not an uncommon reaction that I see mm -hmm. with young girls and their mothers, particularly with their mothers in there, or father, that they'll deny that right. they've had sex. That's that's right. that's pretty common. All right. And so you said it was Lori that called you. You went in, and the liner was still on? Yeah, there was a clean liner on the top. That's why I was like, what are you talking about? Okay. And then she said, pick it up. And when I picked it up, it was heavy. I was like, holy shit. You know what I mean? I knew, right I mean, right away, I knew. Then I just went straight to trauma, too, with the whole trash can. I just went across the, the hall and, and got, you know, broke the baby. So after you, Doc, and, the, and Chris, you know, decided there was no resuscitation, what did y'all do after that? What did you do after that? I made everybody leave the room, and I called, and I told Lori call the police. And but then after that, what anything else? Other? No, I didn't do anything until the police arrived, mm -hmm. and they came and asked me what was going on, and I took them into the room and told them this is what happened, this is what we found, and um, I haven't talked to the, to them yet. Okay. I haven't talked. I haven't said anything to them. So between the officer the, arrived. So from the time of uh, you know declining resuscitation to officer involvement, you didn't have contact with patient or mother. No. Okay, just want to make sure. No, I didn't go in the room till after the policeman showed up, and then I went in there to talk to the to the patient okay. and um, asked her why was the baby in the trash can. And what did she say? She said that it just came out of her, and she didn't know what to do. That's what she told me. And did she say it was breathing, not breathing? She didn't say anything she didn't like say that. Anything. No. She just said so it came out and she didn't know what to do. Right. Okay. And at that point, did mom say anything? Mom was went kind of a little bit irate, like, oh, my God, how, how could you, t you know. But I think the mother was in an assumption that it was a miscarriage. Uh -huh. And I told her, ma'am, that is not the case. This is a full-term baby. 
that was placed in the trash can. And then she really, and that's when I told the mom, ma'am, if you can't control yourself, I'm going to have to ask you to leave the room. Because she's 19, she's an adult. Right. And what, and, and she calmed down? No, she actually left. She went outside. And from from, outside from, to like the waiting room? To the waiting room, yeah. Okay. Hmm. And then she came back in. Once she calmed down. Yeah, and then when she came back in, and then once I had talked, and then the police, once I talked to the police officer and stuff, um, some of the family had started showing up. And um, she went back out there, and at that point, I told them, because the officers asked me to not let anybody in certain rooms, and so I told everybody, and I even went out there and addressed the family, I said, I'm sorry the police are here now, this is kind of an investigation thing, we need to find out what happened, and um, no one would be allowed back in the, in the, into the um, working area anymore. Right. And so I kept them in the waiting room. Did that. they have any comments? Not one. Really? Um, I was really surprised. Not one person asked me about the baby, if it was alive, if it was dead, if it was a boy, if it was a girl. No one asked me anything. Not even, she didn't Not even ask, No, she didn't ask. The only thing she started doing was crying and started talking about she didn't know what to do. Not one. I've never seen in my, I mean, I've delivered multiple babies and I've seen multiple miscarriages and I've never seen a reaction like that. And, um. I, I don't even know what to say about that. I've never seen anything like it in my life. How story. would you describe the reaction? I think um, it was, there was no emotion except for herself. And she really wasn't even crying tears. She was just... And the only thing she would, was upset about was that I think she was going to be in trouble with her mother. That was her only concern, in, in my opinion. There was no concern for the baby. No one asked me any questions about the baby. Not even the family members when I went out there and talked to them, did they say, you know, normally people, I would think, would say, was it a boy, a girl, you know, they, they, no one asked me one question about the baby at all, not, not one. The whole time? The whole time. No one asked me anything about the baby's condition, if it was a boy or a girl, anything, nothing. Okay, did you have any interaction with her when she got, I know she was flown to, to Roswell. Did you have any interaction with her then? We, well, because, um, after, when we looked at the baby, the umbilical cord was still completely attached. So then I had concerns about her health. Um, when something, when a baby comes out like that, we worry about the placenta being still attached, which causes the mother to bleed. Mm -hmm. So at that point, our concern was about her. Right. And getting her somewhere, probably I envisioned that she probably was going to have to have what we call a DNC to get the rest of the placenta out of her to make sure she would be okay. So I was in there explaining to her, this is what's going to happen. You know, we're going to have to fly you to Loveless, uh, to, you know, for you can see an obstetrician to take care of this stuff. So I explained what we were going to be doing with her at that point. But it was just basically, you know, my job telling her, you know, this is what I need to do to make sure you're safe and you are okay with that. Yeah, there's no more conversation about the baby. You I didn't ask, I didn't have any conversations with her about the baby at that point. So. No. Um, my only, only conversations with her were about what I needed to do to ensure her health. And at that point, mom still hadn't talked, asked about the baby. No, mom but was already on the waiting room at that point. Okay. We wouldn't let her back in, but no, she didn't. Okay. Now I know that, um, I had the house because I had called the house supervisor to come down because this is a mm -hmm. big deal, and I know that she kind of intervened on some things in the room. I don't know exactly what they talked about, right. um, but I know that um, Marina was visibly visibly upset about the conversation she had with her. Yeah, yeah we talked to her yesterday. Right. So I I, I don't know what their conversation was. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Marina was quite upset about. The conversation they had—that's all I can say. As you could tell, right. I could tell Marina was upset. Right. As long as as most everybody, which was after that point, my job was to I had to get back. We still had patients coming in. I had ambulances coming in. I had two ambulances show up. I had more patients coming on the floor. I was down three beds because I had them coordinated off. So at that time, my attention turned to I have to get everybody functioning. Right. Which not only did I have to do that with the nurses to get them back. I had to pull the doctor aside and get her focused because she was visibly upset. Right. So that was my 
my mind frame at that time was I have to get these people back. We got to, you know, we have sick people still. This is, can't do anything else. It may sound cold, but that was my mindset is I have, you know, we had sick people and we had ambulances coming in and I have to get these people back online. We have to get back to work. We have to, we have to function. All right. Yeah, the ER still has to I function. Still, I have to roll. Okay. Is there anything we haven't asked you you think we should know? I'm just going to tell you this. I've never, ever seen a reaction like that girl. I, I am, I don't even know what to say about it. There was zero emotion. Um, I, I just, I, I don't even know what to say. I've never seen anything like it. I've seen women that are only married, or, or not married, but um, pregnant for six weeks and they lose that baby and they're a mess. You know what I mean? That girl went into that bathroom, made no sounds at all, and the baby came out of her. And had, I, I don't even know how she functioned that way. To do what she did and with no emotion, I've never seen anything like it. And it was a it was a pretty good sized baby, pretty good size. It looked termed to me. Yeah, me too. I mean, it was term. I I can't tell you that was, but the only thing that upsets me the most is I understand she was scared, and I think her mother had a big dynamic on her, and I I understand that. I mean, I think her mother was probably pretty controlling. I don't know that. I'm just speculation. Um, but she gave me no chance to save that baby. I had no chance, and that's not what I do. My job is to save lives, and I had no chance on that baby. She gave me no chance. And we are a facility that you can drop the baby off, no questions asked. You, don't, I don't even. You can just leave the baby and go. I, I have no. I don't care. You know, as long as you bring the baby to a safe. We are one of those type of hospitals, so it's hard to fathom what was going on in her mind. I, I don't know. I've never, I've never seen anything like that. I pray to God I never see it again. I mean, it's like, it was like, <laughs> I don't even like TV shit. You know what I mean? Right. Shit, you just, I don't even know what to say, man. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, we appreciate what you do. Oh, nice I know we've, we've, we've dealt with, you know, we've done a lot of things together. Um, I, I appreciate what you do. Oh, it's you it's know, my job. Every day. I appreciate but it's, it's not it's not just a job it's a calling and and we can tell that you, you take it to heart and, well it's and I and I truly as a, as a father I truly appreciate what you do well it is very upsetting uh, what transpired yeah. and it's um, like I said it's harder to choke down when you don't even have a shot right. you didn't give me a shot at that kid right so it's it's hard yeah well I know you've been doing it a while, so if you need to talk to somebody, don't hold it in. Well, just get to talking to somebody. This is one of those things you got to put put I in the case and put it away. I know. Work. I know. I've done it many times. Well, so. So you know what I'm saying. Well, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, Cynthia has our my contact info. If we need to get a hold of you, well, it's okay. Is it okay to get a hold of you again? Absolutely, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, in my opinion, um, you know, that kid didn't have a chance. And I don't know what she did or didn't do. Can't say for sure. But I know she gave me no chance. Right. And that's all that matters to me. I didn't get a chance. You didn't get a chance to do your job. I didn't get a chance to save that kid. And I I believe wholeheartedly in my every fiber of being I'd have saved that kid. Or I would, we would have got that, he'd have had a shot. We'd have got him out of here alive. I don't know, but you know what I mean? I, 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 like I said, I don't know. I didn't inspect the child that closely once we looked him over and, you know, there was no signs of life and he was gray and there was absolutely no heartbeat. There was no, nothing, you know, to present life. But um, you always... I always feel like I always have a shot. Right. With whatever comes through my door. This is the one you didn't have that option? I, mean, I didn't have an opportunity. I mean, I've delivered, I mean, a month or so prior to that, we had a lady come in and was breech. The kid was hanging out or blue. And that kid is alive today and well. That's good. So, 
you, you know, I really feel like we, had, we didn't get a shot. Alexi's actions were immature and selfish. The way the charge nurse kept mentioning that she never even gave him a chance to save her baby is so extremely heartbreaking. All Alexi had to do was call for help. The hospital where she went that night was a safe haven location as well, where women can drop off their babies with no questions asked. But instead, like a cowardly moron, She chose to dump her baby like a piece of trash in the one place where there were not only tons of people who could have saved him if he really was having trouble breathing, but she could have also given him to the hospital where he could be adopted and given to worthy parents that would love and care for him. Instead, she robbed him of everything and ended his very precious short life. Detectives tried to get a hold of Alexi to see if she would speak with them, but she wouldn't do so without a lawyer, which was fine. They just needed to hear that from her. Law enforcement had to make multiple attempts to speak to her, and each time they had to remind her mother that they didn't need her permission because Alexi was 19 years old and she was an adult. Now, before we get to the autopsy of the baby, The most disturbing interview, in my opinion, of what may have happened in the bathroom was given by Lori, the CNA. Honestly, she, to me, did not look pregnant, but then she had on a hoodie. So this was fresh to you? Yes, this blood was fresh. You could even smell it. And is the amount of blood consistent with giving birth or a miscarriage or, or some sort of traumatic event? I'm sorry, you repeat that. Okay, the amount of blood in the in the bathroom mm-hmm. on the floor, on the walls, and is that consistent with the amount of blood that is lost when you give birth or have a miscarriage or uh to me, I mean it looked like she had given birth in there and was trying to clean it up. Like it wasn't that much blood on the floor, but you could tell she was cleaning it up because it was like smeared mm-hmm. and somewhat cleaned up a little bit yeah and usually I usually when there's like one or two things in the wastebasket I usually pick it up take it out but I didn't that night and then like I've been kicking myself on this because I feel like you know if I would have just taken it out I would have seen it well no one no one prepares for that type of thing you know what I mean Mm -hmm. most people don't act like that so don't blame yourself for it yeah because it's not a natural thing to do I mean, it's just hard because I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and I've never, I've dealt with death before, but never like this. Right. You know, like, it was horrible. Don't beat yourself up about it, though, because it's something most people don't plan, or most people can't think of it. Mm -hmm. To them, it's, like, unfathomable. So don't beat yourself up about it because it's something you couldn't have prepared for. Yes. Because, like you said before, you were expecting a miscarriage. Yeah, I was just expecting her to have a miscarriage and call it a day. I mean, we've dealt with patients before that have had miscarriages. Yeah. So (laughs) once the baby was taken into the trauma room, or Mm -hmm. trauma room. Yeah, he went into trauma too. Okay. Did you have any, what happened, what what did you do at that point? Um, I just remember, I stayed in there because I actually went to go get Dr. Vasquez, and then I noticed that the umbilical cord looked like an animal had tore it apart. Like, you know, have you ever eaten string cheese? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you twist it, that's how the bottom of the umbilical cord looked. And I just remember it caught my eye, and I was like, God. I was like, this this chick really ripped this thing apart. Because those things are hard to cut. Right. Did you find the other part of the umbilical cord? No, we're thinking, I'm not sure if she had delivered the placenta, because I wasn't in there when they did the final examination. Mm -hmm. But... Either she delivered it in Loveless or she flushed it. You always didn't find it at all. We didn't find it at all. I even looked in the little cabinet that we have in our bathroom because um, mm-hmm. it has like a bottom cabinet. So I opened that up just to, you know, I didn't want no more surprises. <laughs> and how big would that be? How big would the placenta be? Do you mm-hmm. have any idea? No. I would say maybe me personally giving birth myself to a full term baby, it would have to have been about the same size as the baby. Because I've seen placentas where we've delivered a few times here, full-term babies, and their placentas are pretty good size or like that. Like, they fit inside of one of our basins. Right. And is it thick? 
It's or like a... Or is it like... It's kind of thinnish. Kind of like a sirloin steak? Yeah. Thin? Like, like a... You know, looks like roast beef to me. Okay. Oh, that's not a good I'm, I'm picture in my head. <laughs> I'm just trying to describe so, it. But I, we didn't see it. Okay. And that, honestly, I thought that's what was in the wind's basket, was her placenta. Mm -hmm. I did not expect to see this full-term baby. Yeah. Okay, after that, any other involvement? Uh, the only time I saw the patient was when I went in to have her sign her paperwork, the teleforms mm -hmm. that she has to sign so we, because flight crew was on their way to transport her. That was the only time I had any... Did she say call. anything? She just you? cried. She was just crying? Because mm -hmm. okay. uh, there was two police officers in the room with her at the time. How many times did you hear the the toilet flush? Do you think more than ten times? Because that's when I was like, "Dude, <laughs> something's going on in there." Okay. And so that's what because the over ten times in a year, like, in how long? What span of time did the toilet flush? It was like once it flushed, she waited a few minutes and then she didn't flush it again. It was just constant flushing? So mm -hmm. 10 minutes of constant flushing of 15 minutes being in there? Yeah. Yeah, because when she ran to the bathroom, I did see her pass me. Because I remember I told the girls, because she had she had her hand on her, her crotch and one on her butt. Mm -hmm. And she was running to the bathroom. And I was like, damn, I guess we got to go, we got to go. And because um, one of the lab tech, Erica, was sitting there and we were talking. And she was like, dang. She was like, really? And that's when we noticed she was in there for quite some time. So I don't know if maybe the baby was already coming out and she was just ran to the bathroom as fast as she could or or what. Is there anything you think we should know that we haven't asked you? Mm, no. No? Okay, well. I think um, I gave you guys everything I pretty much know. I mean, that's just something I'm never going to forget. Right. Um. So you've been a nurse how long? I'm a I'm a CNA. Oh, CNA for how long? Um, maybe like sixteen years. Oh, so you've been in the ringer. Yeah, I've done a nursing home. This is actually my first time doing hospital. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's why I said like I was I was used to deaths, but nothing like this. Well, just reason I'll ask. So you say it was fresh blood, right? You mm -hmm. have you dealt with dry blood, like dead blood? Mm-hmm. Is it so? Does this smell fresh to you or dead? This is not fresh, like, you know, well, I mean, I've dealt with stab wounds, gunshot wounds, but never like this. Yeah, I understand. And this one was like the most gory thing I've ever had. To, it was like a Stephen King film. <laughs> I feel so horrible for all of the hospital staff that had to experience such a traumatic experience. I can't imagine the absolute horror of seeing a baby with an umbilical cord shredded like string cheese or like it was ripped apart by a savage. This poor innocent baby's mother who referred to her own baby as nothing. Remember, nothing was crying. Did she rip off the umbilical cord with her teeth? Or how would someone physically do this? Again, I've delivered twice. I don't know how this is even physically possible. It would have to literally probably be like gnawing with your teeth at it. It is so savage and just so disgusting that it makes me physically ill. When the baby was found in the trash, he was already cold blue with no signs of life and with a temperature of 95 degrees. The items in the trash can with the newborn were paper towels, trash bags from the restroom, and a tampon. The autopsy said, Baby John Doe was a newborn baby boy who died shortly after birth. Autopsy and postmortem computed tomography showed an infant male without any anatomic abnormalities or obvious physical injuries. The lungs were aerated and there was air in the stomach and no changes of disposition. The connections in the heart that allow proper blood flow in utero were still open, which is not unusual in a newborn. The adrenal glands showed microscopic hemorrhage, which can be seen in hypoxia, which is lack of air. The air in the lungs and stomach, and no evidence of decomposition, is consistent with the baby having been born alive. 
Based on length, weight, and organ size, he was approximately 38 weeks gestational age, which is term and compatible with life outside the uterus. This poor baby boy had a full head of hair that was short and dark. He weighed 5 pounds and 9 ounces and was 18.89 inches long. The cause of death is entrapment and the manner of death is homicide. The legal definition of entrapment is the mechanism of death due to confinement in an enclosed space is usually ascribed to asphyxiation from oxygen deprivation, meaning that this little baby boy suffocated to death essentially. Meanwhile, according to Alexi, he never took a breath. So, um, Cindy Buck actually had told me, okay, like, uh, yes, we need to register the baby. Um, and, like, as if, you know, like a Jane Doe or whatever, like, infant, but, infant male, but, um, there's also, like, a paper that I need you to, you know, ask her. There's a paper that you need to ask her, um, and the nurses fill out. And it's very important that you, um, that we know whether or not the baby took a breath or whether or not the baby did not take a breath. And, uh, I said, okay, well, so at that time I said, uh, because every nurse by that time had been telling me that this, uh, patient had been kind of changing up little bits, bits and pieces of her story while she was in the presence of her mom, I guess. So when I said, okay, I'll try to, you know, get the truth out of her, then uh, Cindy was like, well, whether you have to ask the mother to leave the room, but we need to know. Mm -hmm. So I went and I found the form that Cindy was talking about, and I go into the patient's room and I introduce myself, and um, I said, there's just a few questions that I need to ask you, and most of it was like, you know, uh, first and last name, date of birth, uh, social security number, which she didn't know, and then um, whether or not she knew, uh, whether or not she took any kind of medications, and then, uh, so I said, so, you know, right now it's very important that you're very honest and truthful with me. I said, um, and it was just she and I in the room, and... Uh, Mom wasn't there? Mom was not there. Okay. And I said, um, did your baby take at least one breath when it first happened? Or did, it, did it take at least one breath or was it not breathing? And then she kind of looked at me in the, in the face and the eyes and she was like, well, can I tell you? And I said, tell me what? And she said, um, so I've been having this bad abdominal pain, she said, and we came here to the ER and when they brought me back here to this room, I felt like I needed to go poop. She said, and I asked if I could go to the bathroom. She said, and so when they said, yeah, that I could go to the bathroom, she said, when I sat on the toilet, she said, it just all fell out. And she said, but when I had it in my arms, it wasn't breathing, it wasn't moving. And so, of course, you want to be very, very judgmental at that time. And you have to bite your tongue sometimes. But, you know, my first reaction was like, I wanted to say, hey, well, then why wouldn't you call us for help? But I didn't. I so, um, she said, so I just, he wasn't moving. He wasn't breathing. So I just placed him in there. Alexi threw her own baby in the trash can around 2 a.m. in the early morning hours of January 27, 2023. And now it was almost May. Months passed and nothing had happened to Alexi. However, all of that was about to change. Rosa was about to be confronted with information that for some odd reason seemed to surprise her as much as her daughter being full-term pregnant. An affidavit was signed for Alexi's arrest on May 10th, 2023 for first-degree murder with intentional abuse to a child and tampering with evidence. 
This interaction was also caught on body cam. And just when you think that this family may show an ounce of humility and understand the seriousness of Alexi's actions, they don't. There's none to be had, none to be found anywhere. This is my house. I right. have a right to see the warrant. I'm letting you know she has a warrant for her. Do I have a search warrant for your house? We have a warrant for her. Okay, can we see the warrant? Yeah, once we have the warrant. She gets a copy of it. Can I go up there when you take her up there? It's okay, so what is she under arrest for? She's over 18. She's got a I, okay. I understand that. Right. The detective knows all this. Right. What is she under arrest for? She has a warrant for arrest. Okay. For what? That's all we're going to Okay. What do you mean that's all you're going to tell me? She's over there. I understand that, but I, I have a right to know as well. We'll tell you that. Okay, okay then let me know now. Let me know now. I'm giving you the cooperation. I told you every answer my question. What is she under arrest for? What are you, what is she under arrest you for? No, I'm not bringing her out here yet. Let me know what she's, she's under she's arrest for. For what? For what? For what? Are you okay with telling her? Tell me. Homicide. Open count of homicide. And tampering with evidence. Tampering with evidence? Yes. At the hospital? The reaction is truly just unbelievable to me. The audacity of this family and their reactions is like nothing I've ever seen. When Alexi was arrested, her mom asked the police if they could make sure that she's separated from other people because of what they will do if they find out what Alexi did or what people think she did. That is a direct quote. She said both of those things. Her lawyer is claiming that she had no idea she was even pregnant. I think it's pretty outrageous, actually. That's how high-profile attorney Gary Mitchell describes the charge against his client. 19-year-old Alexi Treviso, who is currently behind bars, charged with first-degree murder. She's in great distress because she's in a jail uh, and, and never been there before and uh, didn't do anything to deserve being there. I don't care what the state of New Mexico may allege. She's at the only facility where she can get help. And then this happens. Uh, I have serious problems with that. I have serious problems with the hospital care. I have serious problems with the records we're now getting out of that hospital uh, because I don't think it's necessarily correct and honest. Treviso's attorney claims there's more to the story. They did some lab work, but they gave the medication before, before and gave it anyway. And that's, that's powerful. Painkillers. Mitchell describes Treviso as a good student involved in cheer and choir with no history of getting in trouble and already committed to New Mexico State University to continue her education. And I have serious problems with the charge in this case, which is first degree murder. Uh, and you can bet your life uh, we're going to defend this tenaciously. The state has filed a motion to keep Treviso behind bars until trial. Mitchell argues she should be released, saying she's never fled after the incident and has no criminal history. She just lost a son. She just lost a child. Well, I mean, come on, there's got to be some common human decency here. Alexi was only in custody for several days before she was released on a $100,000 bond. The judge required her to go to counseling, but she is not required to wear an ankle monitor. From what I have seen online, it looks like she was allowed to graduate high school, but did not attend the ceremony. She's 19 years old. She's a high school senior, graduates next week, although they're not going to allow her to go to her graduation because of the controversy in the community. And uh, they just don't want to have any chaos. She's agreeable to that. They ask very politely. Artesia is one of the finer school systems in the state of New Mexico. And, uh, and they are, and they at least honor uh, their protection of students. Uh, they're very good about that. And uh, they simply ask. And there was not an order or a command from the school as far as we know. They just ask that, uh, she not be there so as not to generate any issues whatsoever. And so she agreed to that. But she took her last final and uh, is to receive her diploma.
Mitchell says Treviso went back to school in January after giving birth, but after her arrest, only returned to take a final exam. He says she has a 3.8 GPA and has already committed to attend New Mexico State University in the fall. On top of that, he says she's never been in trouble before. She has absolutely no criminal record, not even a moving traffic offense, no juvenile record, no suspension from school ever, no infraction at school, and uh, an honor student, and already admitted into college. And uh, uh, a member of the cheer team since she was a freshman in high school, a member of the choir, uh, just an all-round top-notch student and person. Uh, just never been in trouble. I'm assuming that the charges she's facing is going to interfere with her plans for college, to say the least, but who knows. Alexi has been taking a lot of heat online, and so has her mother. A lot of people are wondering if Alexi was hiding the pregnancy the whole time or not, or if her mom really had no idea. I don't know what the truth is, but this interview with one of the nurses raises some serious questions. Once we all figured out what was going on and I went in there, um, she essentially was scared. She was worried that she was going to get in trouble. Um, she did have a back and forth with her mother that was just about like, um, they had said, oh, the mom was upset because she had had sex and hadn't told her. So they were going back and forth on that. And then she was just denying it, which was a little out of the, wasn't really deniable at that point in time. Right. So, so the patient was denying having sex at this point to her mom. Yeah. She was trying to state that she was still a virgin. After she came in from the bathroom mm -hmm. and all the blood and mm -hmm. all that. Okay. So... Uh, did the pelvic, and then I think shortly after that, the mom was in the waiting room after that. Um, and then she was just worried. She was asking me, like, what was going to happen. I told her, obviously, I did not know. Um, Is this when she told, when she, you found out she was worried about getting in trouble? Did she tell you anything, like? She didn't say anything about what had happened. Mm -hmm. She was just essentially worried that she was just going to get in trouble. So... Uh, that's what I mean. Were those the questions she was asking? Mm -hmm. Like, like so what's going to happen to me? Like that kind of thing. Did she ever ask about the baby? No. Not once. Mm -hmm. And so her folks, her getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. And anything other than that, that she talked to you about? She did at one point in time when the ultrasound was, tech was in the room with her ask uh, if there was anything. She pretty much said, would there be any like bad outcomes? If she had started taking, stopped taking one medication and stopped taking another. And I said, well, what medications are you talking about? And she said, well, what would happen if I stopped taking birth control and started taking weight loss medications? And I was like, I, I don't know. Hmm. That's an odd question. I thought so. Just what would happen if you stopped birth control, started weight loss? Mm -hmm. Did, and she didn't, like, expand on that? She didn't tell you why she was thinking that? No, Just, it seemed obvious in my head, though, so. Could you, like, tell me why it seemed obvious? Well, it seemed like she'd been trying to hide this pregnancy from her mother from some for some time. Mm -hmm. So if you pray, if you know you're pregnant, you're not going to continue taking birth control doses. But if you're trying to hide it, you might start taking weight loss medications. That's just kind of what it seemed like in my head. Okay, just want to make sure. Because mm -hmm. it seems like it to me, so just want to make yeah. sure. I'm not thinking... And was the argument between her and her mom pretty heated? I would say heated. It was awkward. Awkward. Yeah. Like they were going back and forth and they were, her mom was definitely angry. Okay. And patient is 19. Mm -hmm. Mom is quite a bit older. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And they never once asked about the baby during the entire time you had contact with her once she left the bathroom. Even no, after they found out that the baby was found and all that, they never asked anything about the baby. I did go, now that I think about it, I did go check on the mom just to give her an update. And I think she asked about the situation, um, like asked what was going on. But I told her I couldn't tell her anything. So I just went to go tell her that like she's being transferred to Roswell. Right. And give her an update on 
her daughter essentially, and that she asked about like what what was going on with all of that. She said, like, "What happened to the bathroom? What happened to the bathroom?" I said, "I can't, I can't tell you." Like, really. But nothing specific right. saying. That's what about the baby? Correct. Okay. First of all, if Alexi was on birth control, did her mom know? And if so, why was she so surprised that Alexi was having sex? It's not clear what medication Alexi was on or if she was taking some type of weight loss medication while pregnant or had stopped birth control and started weight loss meds, but it seems like it could be a possibility. Although it's a little late to ask what the effects of that are if she had already been doing that. Did she think that taking diet pills or whatever she had would hide the pregnancy? Is there a chance that she thought that this may end the pregnancy? I don't know, possibly. Maybe she thought that by taking all of these medications, it would be a forced miscarriage or forced abortion. I don't know. Currently, Alexi's trial is set for October. She has pled not guilty on all charges. Her lawyer thinks that this is ridiculous and still says that she did not know that she was pregnant, which I don't know if I really believe that. What do you think? So she is shocked whenever she delivers a baby. Uh, and then uh, the issue of what caused the baby's death is going to be one that's going to be litigated. I already have a, a real good idea what caused the baby's death. It had nothing to do with my client. She was not at fault. Mitchell says Treviso had spent four hours working out with her cheerleading team earlier in the day and was dehydrated. He says pregnancy didn't even cross her mind. There's no question that she thought she had been protected. Uh, there's no question that she had uh, wisely used birth control, uh, she and her boyfriend. So, but obviously it didn't work. Upon arrival at the hospital, Mitchell says Treviso was loaded with medication, including Zofran, sodium chloride, and morphine. They gave her uh, major medication. Uh, some of that medication certainly dangerous to a unborn child or fetus. Uh, and uh, contraindicated if you're pregnant, certainly contraindicated if you're going to breastfeed later on. And uh, that medication was started without finding out whether or not she was pregnant. He says eventually hospital staff learned Treviso was pregnant, but didn't tell her before she went to the bathroom. He argues she should have been monitored during this time. This is a classic instance that the female needs, feels the need to go to the restroom. Maybe we better check and make sure she's not delivering a baby. I mean, you just don't allow that kind of thing if you know what you're doing. They did and they didn't bother to tell her. Mitchell also stresses Treviso gave birth alone. So this is a situation in which the hospital failed her, the nurses and doctors failed her, the officer, the medical investigator has failed her. When asked why Treviso put her baby in the trash can, Mitchell echoes what Treviso says in body camera video. Lexi, I told you about this. I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. The baby was dead. She took her baby. I know that, and I'm not at liberty to get into that. I need to save that for our experts and stuff to discuss. And I really don't want to uh, tip off the state of New Mexico to what my client might say. Uh, but let me put it this way. Uh, people would be very pleased with the actions that she took and the way she handled the situation, despite the fact She's on major pain medication, is in total shock, and in a state of panic, she still tried to do the right thing by her baby. I'll tell you that much. And that baby wasn't put in the trash right away. As Long Crime Network reported, an autopsy conducted by the Office of the Medical Investigator showed the baby's death was not consistent with a stillbirth, finding he had air in his lungs. Mitchell says the results can't necessarily be trusted. I'm obviously going to have another expert look at that. I don't know if that's true or not, uh, because I don't have much confidence in OMI. He alleges the hospital illegally released parts of Treviso's medical history, something that may be considered malpractice. I'm absolutely convinced that not only will we be able to show that she's totally innocent, but we'll be able to show uh, the... Uh, what some people might call malpractice that took place. 
And that's before we even get into the violations of HIPAA, which is a federal privacy act that protects all of us as patients and protects our medical records and or the doctor patient privilege in the state of New Mexico. Mitchell believes his client will be acquitted of the charges against her when more information comes out. And I don't intend to hold back in representing this young woman. She didn't deserve any of this. Uh, she uh, was an extremely good person, somebody to be really proud of. And because of our attitude now about women's reproductive care and, and the way we treat women in this country, uh, it's now exposed to a first degree murder charge. In New Mexico, a first degree murder charge could yield a life sentence. Child abuse resulting in death could mean an 18 year sentence. Let's see, have you watched the news of the, the girls that what they do to their babies and what they go to jail? The one thing that I am extremely curious about will be what comes up in the digital evidence for this case. Her Google history and text messages may prove to be a goldmine for the prosecution in proving their case, that she knew that she was pregnant, and she knew the whole time and that she tried to kill her baby afterward. Something tells me if she was stupid enough to commit this crime the way that the prosecution sees it, she was definitely Googling like a madman. But I guess we will have to wait and see. Unfortunately for Alexi, things are only going to continue to get worse. And I'm not so sure how a jury is going to see this, but I'm going to take a wild guess that it is not going to be good. Alexis Sevilla, another New Mexico teen, was recently on trial for dumping her newborn in a dumpster to keep her parents from finding out that she was pregnant. She was found guilty and sentenced in May to 18 years in prison. And her baby ended up living after being found in the dumpster by a couple who heard the baby crying. She was charged with child abuse involving great bodily harm. In that case, her lawyer argued that her actions were not premeditated and that a previously undiagnosed mental health disorder played a role. The judge presiding over the case told her that had it not been for luck and the grace of God, he would have been deliberating a sentence in a murder case, as there was a high probability that the child would have died had he not been found. The Alexis Avia story is another insane case with a maddening interrogation that made me want to pull my hair out because of how stupid she was. Alexi's lawyer also says that these cases shouldn't be compared. The parallels that are only drawn is because uh, they're women, and uh, uh, they involve babies. In the Hobbs case, which is the one you're speaking of, uh, the uh, young woman in that case uh, was alleged to have placed her baby in a dumpster, and that she knew the baby was alive and the baby lived. Uh, in our instance, uh, that's not what happened. Uh, the, the baby uh, w w was uh, did not live long enough to. Uh, survive and nothing due to no uh the fault of my client uh, now had she been rendered proper medical care that's a different story but she wasn't rendered proper medical care but what do you think is there reason for a comparison to happen although the outcome was different luckily for the child with one surviving at least it begs the question do these young girls hide their pregnancy because of fear that their parents will find out and what they think that the repercussions will be? I know that there are certain pockets within New Mexico where there is a very strong religious sector. So could it be attributed to that in any way as though they need to be pure, they're virgins until marriage, and that anything else is a red mark and disgrace of the family name? Is that where the pressure comes from? Or are these just irresponsible, selfish, immature young girls that think they can literally throw their children away like a stick of gum? What do you think? And what do you think about this case? I am very curious to know, do you think Alexi knew she was pregnant the entire time? Do you think that it was a big surprise? Do you think her mother had any inclination? And what do you make of all of those interviews and body cam footage? I will be following this case very closely, guys, and I will make sure to be back over here on the podcast and update you as soon as we know more, especially as she's going to be heading to trial just in the next couple of months.
All right, guys, and don't forget, head over to Masterclass to grab that deal while you can. It is 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash AE. I'm telling you guys, there are so many useful classes and instructors there. You're going to love it. Masterclass.com slash AE. So make sure you check back for not only that update, but for other true crime cases, because you know I am coming to you every single week with a brand new case and breaking it all down for you. And I've actually been on kind of a roll lately dropping bonus episodes for you with current cases, ongoing cases. I just dropped another Idaho update a couple of days ago about Brian Koberger and the thought that he actually might be innocent. So if you haven't heard that yet, go listen to that because it is just mind-blowing what's going on in that case. So again, to stay apprised of all of these updates and all these new cases, make sure you're following the podcast. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Serialistly with me. I hope you appreciated the case coverage. I love talking with you guys today, and we will talk about another case bright and early next week, and I will talk with you then. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. I am signing off for the day. Have a great week. Bye.